Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about why I've been to see a chiropractor or an osteopath at least once a week for the last nine years of my life. Now I know what you're thinking, that sounds excessive, but let me walk you through why I think this is actually exactly what I've needed. What is a chiropractor? What is an osteopath? And what is the difference between the two? A chiropractor tends to focus on the spine. They're really looking at the spinal cord. Osteopaths do also have a focus on the spine, but they're looking at the body, in my experience, a little bit more holistically. There tends to be a little bit more soft tissue work, a little bit more fascia work. Some even look at organs and have other modalities in their arsenal that allow them to work on the non-physical aspects of the healing process too. Things like Reiki. Now, I think these are both fantastic modalities, both chiropractic and osteopathy. But I do think with all of this experience that I've accumulated, there are some significant differences and I wanna explain the differences a little bit more so I can maybe help you decide which would be better for you right now. I found that the mindset of a chiropractor tends to be, and this isn't every single one, this has been my experience and I've seen dozens of each. Chiropractors tend towards a mindset of, if the spine's out of alignment, I'm gonna click it, put it back into place and in doing so, we're creating an environment where the body is better able to regulate itself and then it will probably fix itself and it will probably heal. And they're very much just looking at the bottom line as in, oh look, the spine is not in the right position. Let's give it a click so that it can pop itself back into the right position. Whereas I find with osteopaths, they tend to be a little bit more finesse. There's a little bit more digging. I think one of the reasons behind this is, as I said previously, many osteopaths have other skills in their tool set. Not to say that chiropractors can't. One of my favorite chiropractors actually has some education in dry needling, which is a soft tissue release technique. And it's not strictly chiropractic care, but it's a very wonderful complement to chiropractic care. But on the whole, it tends to be that osteopaths will also study as physiotherapists, or they'll study traditional Chinese medicine, and they'll have some herbal qualifications, or they'll know acupuncture or dry needling, or maybe some other things like reflexology, kinesiology they tend to have let's say a couple more tricks in their bag and i think that gives them a different mindset and approach and consequently how they approach working with their clients i think that an osteopath is tends to be a little more root cause orientated so instead of just whack-a-mole where we see a problem click it there's a problem click it there's more like okay why did this problem present itself in the first place is there potentially a muscle imbalance is there a trapped emotion and i find that they tend to to not want to click the spine or parts of the body if they don't have to. They tend to want to prefer to do soft tissue work, so working on the muscles, working on the fascia, the tendons and ligaments. And if consequentially the body then clicks and the skeleton adjusts itself, great, they're, they're happy with that. But more often than not, they just want to work the soft tissues and allow the body to then correct itself with that soft tissue work. So with these distinctions, how do you know which one is right for you? I would say that the chiropractor tends to provide more immediate relief. And if you know that you do have some problems with, let's say, your cervical spine, your lumbar spine, your thoracic spine, you know, maybe you have a slipped disc or you have, so like me, I had a trampoline accident and this created some nerve subluxation and gave me a lot of a cervical trauma. If you've had a car accident or you know that you've experienced something in your life that has actually any other trauma that you know has directly influenced your neck and your spine, a chiropractor might be a really good option. I also think that just getting a sort of general MOT, and if you're not from the United Kingdom, this is sort of like what you would do for your car once a year, you send it in for servicing. You should do the same thing for your body at least once every, I would say six months, just to make sure that it's coping well, everything's going well, and we give it an environment to support it to get to where it wants to be so that it can do what it wants to do. I'll also say that chiropractors generally are the best for any of the specifically spinal problems. But as I begin to talk about how the osteopaths work a little bit more, you're gonna understand that what may appear to be a spinal problem may actually not be a spinal problem. The spinal problem may be a consequence of another problem that an osteopath would be more likely to investigate. Now, if you're someone that's dealing with some kind of complex chronic health problem, maybe you've been to the chiropractor before, but you've never tried an osteopath, I would definitely consider giving it a go. One of my favorite things that I've only exclusively seen osteopaths do is more in-depth fascia work and especially visceral massage. So these are modalities where you're working on the more subtle levels. The fascia is this web of connective tissue that encases every single organ, every single muscle, 
every single bone. As a kid, I always wondered, like, how do all my organs stay where they are? Why do they not just get all, like, jumbled up inside my inside my belly? Why does my liver stay here and my spleen stay here? It's because they're not all just hanging there. They're actually encased in this fascia that holds everything exactly where it's supposed to be. You also could kind of consider tendons and ligaments to be fascia as they, they're basically the same stuff. And the fact that this is everywhere it's around every organ, it's around every tissue, it's around every muscle. And the fact that most people have never even heard that it exists is absolutely crazy to me because it's the common denominator that connects so many different problems. In alternative medicine and holistic healing practices, you're always trying to talk about the holistic nature of things and how everything is connected. But how is it physically connected? It's physically connected with the fascia. I get quite excited about this because working on my fascia has been one of the things that has improved my health the most. Not only has it helped to reduce my physical pain, it's also helped to improve my severe chronic health problem symptoms. So like gut and digestive issues, chronic fatigue syndrome. And there's this also really interesting theory that a lot of the trauma that we experience is held and stored in the fascia. This is both physical and emotional or non-physical trauma. So by working directly with the fascia, we kind of have this gateway to the next level of the healing process in this truly holistic fashion. So when we're working in this way, we're thinking this is more of a long game. Chiropractic is more like go for one session, like click, click, feel much better, immediate reward. And that's not bad. I actually just went to a chiropractor's today. I had some dry needling, I had an adjustment to my neck, feeling better is extremely valuable in your journey to recovery because not only does it improve your quality of life which makes you more able to enjoy the journey and tolerate the experience but i also believe that feeling better in the short term is a really good indicator that your body's working better which is the best way to help yourself heal in the long run because if your body's working better you are healing more quickly and more efficiently. But I would look at osteopathy as more the long game. You might leave a session and not really feel much difference at all. Not to say that's always how it goes. I've been to osteopath sessions where I've been in significant pain or discomfort and I leave feeling much, much better. Because when this fascia is tight or when the fascia around the organs is tight, the muscles don't work, the organs don't work, the body isn't functioning correctly. And when we re-enable this function, you will feel better. So if you are dealing with a more chronic problem, you know, chronic digestive problems, so you have a chronic injury in your knee or your ankle or your pelvis. I think that overall you're better off going to an osteopath and it's playing more the long game. So you're probably going to get a better return on investment in the long run. So now you've got all of that, I want to share with you why I have been to an osteopath or a chiropractor every single week for the last nine years. And actually that's not technically true because I would say for a good portion of that, let's say and I don't know exactly, but let's say two to five years, I was actually going twice a week, not once a week. So that kind of actually emphasizes just how important a part of my recovery I believe this to have been. Here's my philosophy behind it. So doing one appointment a week is expensive. Doing two is twice as expensive. And you can very easily get stuck in a mindset of this costs a lot of money, you know, because you also have all the supplements that you're doing. You have the other practitioners that you're working with. You have the other things that you want to try that you need to budget for. But the reality of my experience has been like I tried lots of supplements. Many of them don't make much difference. For me, osteopathic and chiropractic care has almost always made me feel better in the short term and therefore consequently supported my body to function so it can help me heal in the long term. And one of the things that I got stuck with, and I think maybe you're stuck with as well, many people get stuck with this, is trying to figure out how to heal when in reality, we already have modalities at our fingertips that we know help us, that we know are working, that we know we get a really good return on investment for, but we don't max them out for money or how it looks or feeling like it feels ridiculous. You know, for a very long time, I was using eight to 10 cups of Epsom salts in a bath and that looked ridiculous to everyone around me, but I knew it worked. And I've had many discussions, like for example, with my wife about personal finances, because she's like, you spend more money on these modalities than you do on rent. <laughs> and that's not right. And I was like, yeah, I get it. But taking care of myself, spending money on these modalities, looking after myself in this way, makes me not only feel better, but consequentially helps me heal in the long run and makes me more productive in the short term. I've personally found that I am my own biggest asset and also my single biggest liability. So basically, if I don't take care of myself, I don't do any of the things that I want to do or that I tell myself that I will do with my life because I don't feel good, I'm in pain or in discomfort, 
and I just don't do it. Whereas when I do invest in my self-care, when I do take really good care of myself, I tend to have a much more naturally positive outlook. I'm more creative, I'm more inspired. The idea for this video itself actually came to me right after having my adjustment and I went, I felt so much better. So I was feeling very, very run down just before it. I had the adjustment and then I went for a walk because I felt good and on this walk, I got all of this inspiration, all of these ideas, all of this creativity. So for me, this is one of the really effective modalities that I just need to maximize. I need to use it to the maximum effect because many people struggle to find what works for them. As soon as you figure out what it is, maximize it. Do it to the maximum that you possibly can so that you can get the maximum benefit. In my coaching calls, I call this part, don't reinvent the wheel. So this is, you've already figured out something that helps you. Let's just maximize the benefits from the thing that's already helping. And I think for most people, chiropractic or osteopathic care is something that can be extremely helpful because you have a hands-on approach. You have somebody that's working with your body. You have physical touch. Physical touch is an extremely underrated but important part of recovering from chronic health problems. Or if you don't have any chronic health problems, lucky you, maintaining good health. It is absolutely essential. If you take little baby rats and little baby mice and you don't tickle them, you don't play with them, you don't give them any touch, many of them die and the others develop antisocial or behavioral problems. So touch is just as important, it's just as nourishing as the foods that we eat. I know what it's like having a chronic health problem. I didn't have anybody touching me. I was basically just laying in my bed the whole day alone. And when you've had the experience of feeling terrible inside your body every single day, learning that your body can actually be a place where you can feel good, where you can feel pleasure, is an extremely important part of the healing process. So I'm not sure if I will continue to go every single week for the rest of my life. It really depends on how I feel. And I am sure that as I continue to heal and get stronger and my body is better able to function by itself, it will need less of these external supports. But it's good to know that I have a very strong handful of modalities that really work for me that I can lean on when I'm sick, when I'm run down, when I don't feel so great. It really takes a lot of the fear and anxiety out of having health problems when you know exactly what to do about them when you're experiencing those symptoms. So I'd be really interested to hear from you have you tried chiropractic care? Have you tried osteopathic care? And if, you, if you've tried osteopathic, have you tried some of these more interesting modalities? You know, Have you tried dry needling? Have you tried acupuncture? Have you tried visceral massage? Have you tried fascial work? Let me know what your experience has been with these things. Not only do I find this really just kind of like from a nerdy perspective, quite interesting, it also helps me to help other people and you never know who's going to read your comment. You might leave a comment offhandedly is a missing puzzle to someone's chronic health problem and it just clicks something into place for them. You really have absolutely no idea how much what you share could influence somebody else's life and maybe that person would be me. So let me know, what have you tried? What have your experiences been? And if you haven't, is it something that you're going to consider after watching this video? Just before the video ends, there are a couple of cat bloopers that I wanted to share with you because my nan's cat decided she wanted to come and visit me as I was recording this video with the door open as nobody was home. So enjoy those. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Grandma's cat has come to say hello. Hey Lenny, look. Come this way, look. Look here. Yeah, say hello to everyone. You need to purr in the microphone, did you? Oh no, what have you done? <laughs>